Thank you. Here we go. Um, when you're ready, Steve. Yeah, so uh, on the back of last night, um, we're very confident that Kamar uh, will pull through. We think we, he, he's got that really early. He's just come off with a bit of tightness. I think he's been really sensible there. Um, I said to the players, you know, on, on this surface, having trained on it the day before, not to be taking any risks. So he's done the right thing. So we're confident on Kamar. Uh, just got an update on Liam Ballag and he'll clear with the physios today, hopefully, and he'll be available as well. Uh, Jack, Arriba and Bach had a progression well, but won't be with us for the weekend. Alfredo's fine as well. He's still got stitches in his knee, but um, he played last night with no problems and, and will be available, which is impressive for, for the injury he's got to, to come through, what, three days after that was, was fantastic. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, David Tanner with a question, please. Thanks, David. Good morning, Stephen. Morning. How pleased were you to see Alfredo Morelos uh, scoring uh, terrific goals, but also smiling and looking as though he was, he was happy and enjoying himself last night? I think that's a great visual for me all the time. It's when I see him smiling, when I see him enjoying his football, when I see him in good shape. Um, you know, we know he's, he's a fantastic goal scorer. I think his goals were different last night, but two fantastic finishes. He's in the right place at the right time for the first one which, you know, you don't coach. I think you're born with that, you know, where you sniff them goals out. Um, and the second finish is obviously, you know, he shows his class and his touch. But even before um, a ball was kicked, even just to make himself available, you know, he, he's very robust. Um, and for a manager, he's always there for you. You know, I think a lot of players wouldn't have pulled through with what he had from the weekend. So um, I'm really pleased for him and it's great to see him smiling. I think he has a real good rapport with the players when he's out there on the pitch. Um, but he seems a lot happier uh, in, in, in the last few weeks. Robert Fernie, please. Morning, Stephen. Morning. Um, looking ahead to Hibs on Sunday, they obviously go into the game in, in good form. Um, they're not conceding a lot of goals and um, playing pretty well. What, what do you make of the challenge they pose and how difficult is it going into an away game like that, sort of sandwiched between two away European games? I guess that's quite a, is that an unusual challenge, given that you'd maybe normally have a home game either side of that. Um, look, look, I think in terms of the schedule, we just have to accept what it is. We know it's going to be unique and different this year because of the COVID. Um, in terms of Hibs, they're a, they're a strong team. They're playing with confidence. They're playing uh, with a lot of rhythm in the game. They've got a good coach. So it's going to be a, a tough challenge for us going to Easter Road. But we're going there with confidence ourselves. We're playing well. We're defending well. Uh, we're looking a real good threat going forward. Um, so, you know, we're going to Easter Road to attack and to win the game. And you know, my focus is certainly on us and we couldn't be in a better place going into it. Alison Conroy, please. Domestically, do you think this trip to Easter Road will be your toughest challenge of the season so far, given how Hibs have started as well? Yeah, well, I wouldn't like to disrespect Aberdeen by saying that. I think um, Aberdeen going to Batodri, the first game of the season, um, on the back of a different pre-season was... Yeah, a very big challenge as well. Um, so I don't like to rate what was tougher out of that. But what I would say is Easter Road is going to be another tough challenge for us. We're playing against a good Hibs team that are in form. Um, so you treat this game in isolation, but you know we're going there with respect, but certainly with confidence that we can go and do the job. Andy Newport, please. Hi, Stephen. Uh, can you just give us your thoughts on Willem Twain in the next round of um, the Europa League and also... If, uh, if you do manage to get through that round, if you would uh, fancy your chances against Jose Mourinho in the, the round after that? Well, I think first and foremost, we need to enjoy last night and qualifying last night. Um, we're certainly aware that the level uh, is going to go up in the next round. You know, we watched the game the night before that Willem Swipe played against Progress and they're a good team, good players, good, exciting attacking players. So we're certainly aware of the task and the challenge that it's going to become a lot more difficult. Um, but it's certainly a game we're looking forward to. You know, we have to go to the Hibs first and put in a performance there and hopefully we go in in, in, in a real good place. Gabriel, go ahead, please. <clears throat> Morning, Stephen. Um, just going back to the game on Sunday against Hibs, obviously at Easter Road, do you think they will perhaps come out and play more than other teams, or especially the Ibox teams often stand? Do you think they will come out and play or do you think it could be a case of the two best defences in the league cancelling each other out? Well, I'd certainly be guessing because I don't know what Jack Ross is going to do. I don't know how he's going to set up. I've got a good idea. Or, you know, if you go on their previous games that they've shown this season, um, 
I think it'd be very strange if they changed their style. And yes, they do play a, a bold attacking game, but we'll have to wait and see on the day what we come up against. But Did you always intend to play Alan McGregor in this game when he was fit? And if you have an extended run in the competition again, is that something that you might look at in terms of alternating your keepers to keep them happy or not? I think I'll decide at the time from game to game. Um, what I will say is I've got two fantastic keepers who are going to push them, push each other really hard. I can see that in training. It's competitive. You know, they get on really well. I've got big respect for each other. Um, I didn't predict or envisage that it would have gone the way it's gone. Uh, with all due respect, the, the plan and the idea was to, you know, if Alan had a strong pre-season, um, I was going to obviously start with Alan as the number one. I think he would have deserved that on the last two years in his form. Unfortunately, he's had a couple of knee niggles or injuries that have set him back. And um, John certainly took his chance and um, he performed well. He's playing with calmness and he's playing with experience and he's keeping clean sheets and making saves. So it's very difficult to change the keeper in that situation. Um, if it did work out as I would have worked out, I would have played John McLaughlin last night to give him a game because I think you don't want your keepers going too long without a game and unfortunately we're not in a position where we can play games behind closed doors because of the testing and stuff so um, I do have to try and be, uh, I wouldn't say clever is the right word but I do have to think about trying to keep them both as fresh as I can but also sharp you know, with, with the right amount of minutes. Look, Donnie Morelos, you, you said there that you know another player may not have made himself available given the, the gas you got at the weekend. Do you think there's a possibility after all that's been said, his head had gone, then he's refocused again? Is there a possibility he could be at Rangers beyond this window? Of course, there's a possibility because no one knows what's uh, going to happen in the coming days, in the coming weeks. Um, I said a few weeks back to the media that you just, in my situation, you take um, each day as it comes. The good thing is he's playing well, he's in much better shape. Um, you know, he's looking sharper, he's scoring goals, he's looking happy, and we just take it day by day. Um, I think that's a question for Alfredo um, and his representation to answer rather than myself. Um, but for me, at the moment, he's fit, he's available. It was fantastic to see him pull through um, because, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about any other players, but Alfredo um, is someone who will put his body on the line uh, for the club. I think he showed that last night by playing with the injury that he sustained at the weekend. Um, he, he hasn't mentioned it since. Um, so he'll have, a, he'll have a rest day today and then he'll be ready for the weekend. Luke, go ahead, please. Stephen, with the, some of the injuries and you're then saying, obviously, with the goalkeepers, it's good competition. How far away do you think you feel you are from having the squad you want or how many more would you like to have in before the window ends? Um... Well, I think it depends. I think it depends on if anyone was to go out the door uh, in terms of numbers. So it's difficult to give you a number on that. Um, everyone knows, it's no secret, that we're looking for uh, a midfielder you know, to, to, to join us if we can, if we can find the right person. But if we can't find or make the person or the, the signing happen that I want, um, I'm not just going to jump in and take anyone. It needs to be the right person to fill this role. Um, so it, it's a difficult um, question for me to answer right now, but we are looking to add and to strengthen. Uh, but in terms of how many, will depend on um, if there's any action out the door as well. Jordan Campbell, please. Hi, Stephen. Um, you had all four of your, your strikers play last night um, to varying, varying degrees of the game. Um, how far away do you think you are uh, having your ideal system, whether it's one or two or three of them even, uh, all starting on your team? I think we've got the ideal system right now. I think we're winning games. I think we're keeping clean sheets. Uh, forwards are scoring goals. Uh, Cedric's the only one really that we need to obviously get him up to speed. He's had a, missed a couple of weeks, which is not the ideal timing from his point of view. Um, but he got a good 60 minutes under his belt last night. But um, I, I don't think we're trying to search for anything in terms of what we're looking for. We're happy with the names in the door the moment we're happy with how we're playing the level we're performing at um, and it's nice to have a lot of firepower to pick from and David Edgar please morning Stephen no. um, 
you mentioned last week about Alfredo. Uh, he was in the receiving end of a pretty hefty tackle, um, and you'd said you'd be interested to see what happened if it'd been the other way around. Do you think that sometimes referees prejudge a player a little bit, and occasionally when they're handling Rangers, that they sometimes make decisions they maybe wouldn't in a less high-profile match? No comments. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. So, so, I'll go here. 